Hey, what's happening, man? It's Cool Water, the Digital Dope Man here from Ballroom Chats. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to briefly, man, just 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 um, talk about Hell's Kitchen tonight. Uh, I kind of walked in late on a particular episode of Gordon Ramsay's. I'm sorry, yeah, Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. And what the theme of that is, is that he has 24 hours to turn around these very, very poor operating restaurants. So he just so happened to be in, I think this was Mississippi. And Mississippi is one of the lowest economic poor uh, states in the country. Education is like, they down way below 50 like they might be close to 100 as far as the scale of educational um scores and things of that nature uh within the state and you can see the poverty in the show from the people that was actually working there and um the business owner and you know they just looked like they were financially not quote unquote well off, so to speak. Um, so as Ramsey comes in, as Gordon comes in, and he begins to identify the issues, you know, the kitchen is a mess, the restaurant is a mess, the owner, she is losing it. I think the Nimrod family is what it was, what, what they were called, and the restaurant was called Sherman's. Uh, they begin to show all of the ill wills that were going on inside the restaurant. So as his team went in and recorded the issues, recorded the, the mess, the goop, the, the, the rotten food, there was a particular chef that was really responsible for a lot of the issues that was going on in the kitchen. And with that being said, <clears throat> um, comes to find out they paying him $90,000 a year. Now, Gordon was telling the young lady white female business owner who had a number of black uh, cooks and um, line servers working, a couple of white young white girls working, uh, you know, how the restaurant should be ran. And as he sat down with her husband, the business owner, and her husband, he said, if you have a cook that's making 90, that you're paying 90,000, he should be bringing in $300,000 worth of business. So she didn't really want to fire him because she felt like he was a pillar of the community. He had been around for 30 years. People knew him. They had a respect for him. And he was a fragment of the restaurant that needed to be included to continue to make that progress forward. Gordon. Eventually, after showing him all of the ear wheels on the big screen and told all of the uh, um, customers to come back in 24 hours, he began to work with the cooks. And the white guy that was the head chef just couldn't seem for some reason or another to get it right, to get the menu down, the new menu. Eventually, Gordon convinced them, the business owner and her husband, to fire the head chef. So they pulled him to the side. They fired him. So what brings me to this podcast and what brings me to all of the stuff that I'll be talking about and who killed the black entrepreneur and, and like, you know, the, the, the movie when I talked about the, the purge and you talk about racial equality in America, dealing with African Americans, you talking about, um, economic opportunities and social injustice and blah, 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 blah. What brings me to speaking about this is they fired the white guy at $90,000 a year. They promote the next person in line was a young black female around 44, 45. You can see she wasn't real financially astute or wasn't being paid well per se because you could see it in her teeth you could see it in her skin you could see it in her demeanor her hair the way she kept herself and being again mississippi is a relatively poor state job market may not be that great down there you know so they fired a white guy and they promote her to head shut 
So I can't quite quote, quote unquote, say whether or not this is true, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say it anyway. Did you all offer this woman the $90,000 pay raise that you was giving the white guy? Probably not. She was already in position. She was already working. And I'm sure you all wasn't paying them no more than $12, $13, $14 an hour, maybe $15 if you're lucky. They might have even bumped her up to $20. And $20 an hour working eight hours a day ain't relatively going to equate to no more than about mm, $26,000, 27000 maybe 28000 after taxes she may bring home. I'm just going to say after taxes, if she get $20 an hour, she working eight hours a day, that's 160 a day. She might be bringing home 25 to 27,000. I'm going to go with the low end around 25. So you just freed up $90,000 and you didn't possibly offer her $90,000 in increase because she can outcook the chef. You know, black woman can cook. She mastered the new menu. Her and her, all the black girls and the Latina girls, they mastered the menu in 24 hours, which is extremely difficult to do. But black women can get in the kitchen and get it. You know how they do. When they know how to cook, they're going to whip it up. But it didn't come with an economic increase. Now, the girl say she's been working there for like 20-some, maybe 30-odd years and started out as a dishwasher at Sherman. And worked her way up to head chef based on the white guy being fired, which ain't no real accomplishment. But again, you know, this is the type of the, the, the BS I'm talking about. So now baby getting played. She giving y'all ninety thousand dollars worth of equity in that kitchen and helping increase your bottom line. But is there a chance that y'all really offered her that money? Probably not. It probably didn't even come across your mind because I'm sure her husband like, man, don't worry about it. Just give her three or four or five more dollars. So she go from, let's say she making 13 and now she making 18. You don't know none the less. Because really you already was doing the same work. So ain't no need of me giving you no real raise. It's the slick shit that some white folk be on. We family, we love you. you, you part of the family, you part of the team. But it don't come with no compensation. It don't come with no extra money. It ain't coming with no benefits. You still struggling to get them bills paid. You can't go over here and get no dental. You can't go over here and get your kids uh, uh, the, the best possible education possible because financially it ain't in their budget. And they really don't want it to be in the budget because, again, they on the uprise. They trying to make sure that they blossom. So, you know, if you pay the girl 90000 all the other girls going to be looking like, well, damn, can we get a raise, too? Because we all been in the same boat. You see? So, I, I, I all I could do, man, was just say, uh. And then she was relatively happy just to be the head chef. The head HNIC, and y'all know what that is for everybody that really know, you know, that's, that's, that's down with the team. You know what the head HNIC is. She's just happy with the title. But the title don't come with no money. See, this is the type of stuff that Claude Anderson be talking about in the Pyronomics. This is what keeps you where you at. This is what keeps you trapped. You ain't got no power. You ain't got no wealth. You ain't in a position to make no major moves because you don't know how to play the game. That girl probably won't even so much as go and ask for a raise. You see what I'm saying? She probably won't even ask for a raise because she's just happy to be in the mix. You understand what I'm saying? So for her, it's cool. And the restaurant looks good. And she happy to just have a job. Because this is the type of stuff Negroes do. I'm just happy to be working. But a lack of education. 
a lack of uh, social skills, a lack of mentors, a lack of 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 uh, 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 real fundamental financial education keeps people in that particular state of mind. Because the first thing I'm gonna ask is. How much money you finna give me after you done bump me up? I'm gonna get to you, but I, I might not get to you that day, but I'm gonna get to you. See? See, don't nobody know that he was making 90000 See? Nobody knows. But the owner and him, and the white guy that got fired, the owners know, he know. The black girls probably didn't know he was getting paid that type of money. So y'all gonna throw that girl, y'all might get that girl $2 raise, man. Three dollar raise, cause it's the slick shit that that, that that folks be doing. So you know, I, I found that to be very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gordon made the you know made the, the the reference that she should be moved into the position, and and you know, I mean, well, well, the owners made the reference that she should be moved to the position. Gordon felt that was the best move, but nobody talked about the money. Nobody said you can put that type of money. You could have cut it in half and gave that girl forty five thousand, and you still would have been that would have been blessing her. That would have upgraded her lifestyle. So I think at the end of the day, man, uh, it's another hook in the crook, another sham, another you bamboozled, another uh, uh, banana in the tailpipe, as 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 uh, Eddie Murphy would say. Uh, and a lot of folks is out here getting played, man. And and, and if I can play you. Without you being cognizant of me playing you, then I'm going to continue to play you. So you got to become astute. You got to understand every angle of the game of business because they bottom line going to go up. They're going to get richer and richer and richer. Then they may decide to open up another store. And they're going to have that young black girl go over there and train them folks. That's not going to come with no extra money. They might throw her a bonus. They might give her a thousand. They might give her a couple grand for the bonus. But that ain't that ain't increasing her quality of life. You see what I'm saying? So I just wanted to you know, put that out there, man. Uh, you know, I'm putting it out there because I'm watching Shark Tank and I'm just looking at how these folks is moving out here. And it's, it's, it's more to it than you just having a business. It's more to it than you just having a lot of money. It's more to it than you just saying, yeah, I got a pretty old house, pretty car. It's a lot more to it than that. You know what I'm saying? I got my car in the shop. The brother gave me a loaner. He messes around. I brought it to him this morning, 11 a.m. He told me two hours. Seven hours later, my car still ain't fixed. He giving me the runaround and the blues. Now, he been doing work for me for a while. I've been doing excellent work. But he don't have no manager. He ain't got nobody over him. Ain't nobody watching him. So you're going to get what you get. And that's the difference. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's the organization. It's the systematic process. It's knowing how to move. So he losing money every day, him hoeing around. Because he don't have his stuff together. Because he don't have nobody running the business for him. Or him knowing how to run a business. So he just taking money over the table and giving you your stuff, man. It's like a cash cow. Ain't nothing being, ain't nothing being transpired. Ain't nobody making no real paper. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, so it's imperative. It's imperative that y'all learn how to make a move and move properly so that you can start putting yourself in a position where you're sitting at the table as a power player instead of just somebody saying, I got some money, I'm wealthy, I'm rich. You want the power and the money and the ownership, which all of that comes together. You dig? That's the type of decision-making and thinking that we got to start having so that we ain't just out here getting handed whatever. Because these people ain't playing. Trump ain't playing. He privatizing everything. He raising tariffs on other countries for the sole purpose of trying to prove to them that America is strong and we got muscle. Now, the relationships is being severed. Goods and services is going up. And what you think that's going to do with the economy? It's going to make the economy tank. Because these folks taking their products, they're going to either pull them or they're going to raise them. But the quality of, of income and job uh, uh, growth and, 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 and wages, wage earnings is not being risen to meet, to, to meet the demand on the prices. So inflation going to go through the roof, but your money ain't going to be able to meet inflation. 
And then you look at you look at the country hollering bankruptcy. You look at the country going into a recession. You look at the banks failing. You look at the banks, they doing a bank run. You look at all the stuff that's going to put you to a position where you might be out on the street with your family living in a tent, but you still going to work. This is what's going on. So even though that young lady that's a cook got that position, it may have not came with an increase in salary because they don't need to pay her because they don't need that. They don't need that Negro paying, having that type of money. No way. And they probably didn't know that that, that white dude was making that type of bread. $90,000 a year as a head chef. So they may bump her up and they may get her, you know, she may go from 15 to 18 to 20 dollars an hour. And like I said, that may be between 25 to 30 thousand dollars. But after you tax it, you write back down, you might be down to 24, 25. No money. Especially with the good inflation and in the state of Mississippi. So I'm going to get off, man. I'm done talking. But, you know, I just wanted to put that out there, you know, because it's weighing heavy on my mind. I'm seeing all of the discrepancies that go on in business, you know, and it and, 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 and it's up to people to get really wise so they can start having some some strong levels of success. Hey, man, I'm out. It's cool. Water the digital dope, man. Look for me. Uh, is hip hop dead dot com. Look for me at the uh, digitaldopeman.com and be on the lookout for Who Killed the Black Entrepreneur Lecture Series. Peace and stay blessed. Holla.